Church of Christ that meets here at 619 North Grand in Sherman, Texas, Brother C.E. Shaw, our minister. It is indeed a blessing to be able to look out amongst the audience and see those who have fared the weather and have been able to come out and be in an assembly to worship with us this morning and worship the Lord in both spirit and the truth. We want to say to those that are visiting with us, you are very much our honored guest. We appreciate your presence here, uh, being with us in the audience, as well as those that may be viewing us uh, via uh, satellite. We just want to say uh, to the congregation as a whole, we say thank you once more and again as we continue to don uh, face masks and continue to follow along with what the CDC is, is recommending, even though we know that there is uh, the breakdown and the allowances of indoor masking, people are kind of getting, kind of backing up on that and allowing people to not have to wear them. Um, we here at Grand Avenue are still wanting to do it, everything we possibly can until it becomes that situation where we really truly don't have to do it anymore. Some people may say, well, you're being kind of kind of petty. And the blessing is nobody is saying that. I'm throwing out. People may be saying that. They may be saying it in their minds. That's not the case, brothers and sisters. We want to be safe ourselves. We want to keep you safe. We want to keep our visitors safe. And so uh, we appreciate it already. And just want to re reiterate how much we appreciate the cooperation that brothers and sisters and friends and visitors are doing as you visit here. You may hear the the rumble in my voice this morning. Uh, I thank you again for your prayers because I know someone was praying for me because I don't have a cold. All you're hearing is a yearly, around this time, an annual time that I pick up this little wheeze. I think it has to do with me getting older. And as I cough through the night, it disrupts my voice. But I, my temperature's been checked. I don't have a fever. I haven't had a fever. I don't feel sick. I really feel good, and I'm definitely feeling thankful that God has blessed me to be here. But I say thank you to the men of this congregation that I work with because they stepped up. As always, uh, I, I contacted three brothers, and uh, I have one today that stepped up to the plate. He's going to be directing our hearts and songs, so we appreciate uh, Brother Monroe so much for that. But then Brother Foreman uh, texted me. He said, Brother Boyd, you know I do whatever I need to do. And he was ready, willing, and sure enough able. So I say thank you to him, as well as all the men that are working in our services this morning. We are blessed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because God is good all, all the time. God. And all the time, God, God is good to us. We are his people. Yes. And we shouldn't just say that just to be saying it. We know we repetitively say it. A lot of times it gets to be a kind of like a uh, thing where you get common with it and you just say it because he's asking, we're going to ask him. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Don't say it if you don't mean it. It's a, thing, it's a statement we make, but God is really truly good to us. And a lot of times we take that for granted. And we kind of go ahead and take the blessings that He bless us with. And go on about our way. And don't think about just, why did He bless me today? Why did He wake me up this morning? Why did He wake my children up this morning? Why did I not like, get a call in the middle of the night that someone that I love has passed on. Why is it that I'm not sicker than what I could be or what I am? You know, because God is good to us. That's why. Because God is good to us. And it's a lot of people that didn't wake up to see a new day. We did. And we should be thankful. And my prayer is that everyone under the sound of my voice has already thanked God for blessing you to see this new day. Now, I tell you now, if you haven't thanked God, while I'm running my mouth, you ought to close your eyes and thank Him now. And you ain't going to close your eyes. Just thank Him for blessing you to see another day. And not only you, but your loved ones as well. I don't know what the rest of the day is going to be like. I don't know what tomorrow may bring. But I know that the hour now is at hand. And all we got is right now. All we have is right now. And if we're not thankful for right now, if 
you're not thankful, if I'm not thankful for the right now, then I know I'm not going to be thankful for the next few. <clears throat> not for the next few. Please remember all of our sick and shut in in your prayers. Community Service Ministry, we are collecting items again, as been already mentioned, regarding the tubs that are on the side of the seat, uh, on the side of the tables. Anything you have to put in there uh, in regards to as a bulletin that's posted, as a list posted in, uh, at the entry tables. Look at that list of things that they're asking you to place inside of those uh, tubs. And if you possibly can, please do that. Items will be placed in the tubs located at the end of the tables. Thank you in advance for whatever it is uh, that you may assist in uh, putting in those. And that's for the community uh, service ministry. Our Church of Christ Man's Day, Saturday, March the 26th. Uh, our registration time is at 9 o'clock uh, a.m. Uh, remember all the sick and shut-ins already been mentioned in your prayers, all of our bereaved, bereaved, bereaved uh, family members and loved ones. Our sister Nicole Jones is at uh, Karis uh, Hospital out on Highway 82 in room 212. Our visiting hours are from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. to p.m. Anyone uh, that is able to visit can visit. Please adhere to all the guidelines put in place by the CDC, as we've already mentioned, in regards to wearing your mask and what we're going to do here at Grand Avenue. We, again, we do appreciate your uh, compliance uh, to those things uh, that we've requested and asked of you to do. All right. Bow with me, if you will, as we go to the Lord and the Word of Prayer. Heavenly Father and God Almighty, it is at this time that we come humbly bowed and wonderfully thankful. But we can't see into the future. And we can't go back into the past. But we know the right now. And right now, Lord, we just want to come and say thank you. Thank you for bringing us to this moment that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for bringing us through a week of turmoil for some, grief for many, anxiety, hardships, heartache, tragedies, trauma. We thank you for bringing us through that. But on each one of those situations, we say thank you because in each and every interval of those different occasions for different people, we were able to call on you and you were there to ask our prayers. We're here today, Heavenly Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth and to not only say thank you, but to show our thanks to you and our praise to you and our listening to the, the message that has been uh, prepared for our hearts to feast upon in order to fellowship and to enjoy the uh, comfort of one another's smiles and handshakes and brotherly love because this is a day, Heavenly Father, that was made for you for your children to come together. So we ask you, God, that as we come to you in prayer and in this assembly and that you are in this place, that we will show you and give you the honor and the glory and the respect and the love and the appreciation that you so well deserve. We ask you, God, that as we prepare to go through a new week, if it's your will that we should see it, that we will conduct ourselves in a way that you may be able to look down on us with a smile. That you may have favor upon us, Heavenly Father. Not respect of persons, but favor. Saying that you're pleased in our efforts as we strive through this sin cursed world. We ask a special prayer for the entire world. We ask a special prayer for those that are fighting wars, for families that are displaced. The situations and lives that are turned upside down because of the, of the hatred and the evilness of, of man. We ask you, Almighty God, that we take make aware and pay close attention to the things that are going on because everything that happens in this world affects us, whether directly or indirectly. We ask you, God, that you will be with your man, servant. Shaw, as you, through the Holy Spirit, have placed 
a message up on his heart that he may deliver it in such a way and recall all the things that are needed to help this congregation continue to be competent, steadfast, and unmovable in the work that we do for the cause of Christ. Help us to always be knowledgeable, mindful, and willing to please you. And in pleasing you, Heavenly Father, that is our duty. Then we pray that you will be pleased in our efforts and say to us one day, well done, good and faithful servant. Be with our sick and shut in, be with our bereaved, be with our sick, that are having tests being done this week, continue to watch over them. This is my prayer. In the name of your Son and our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ.
Good morning, sister and brother. Good morning. It's so great to see you. It's so wonderful to see you. Brought us, good Lord brought us through another week. And we are here to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I thank God for you. That's my favorite word, and I love you. Because God loves you. If I don't love you, I don't love Him. But I love you. And I mean that. Hope everybody's feeling well. You're looking well. Amen. So I thank God that He brought us all here Amen. down the dangerous highway. Amen. So we're gonna go to Him and pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I approach Your throne of grace, I humble myself before Your throne. Yes. Thanking You for being so good to us. Not because we were so good, it was just your grace and your mercy, Lord. Most of all, we thank you for waking us this morning. Mm -hmm. Come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Put a little joy, a little happiness in our life, Father. You brought us from a mighty long way. Yes. We wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for you. And most of all, your son who came into this world to save what was lost. Yes. He was treated so bad. Mm -hmm. He was called names. Mm -hmm. He was more beaten and more hurt that they put to him. They enjoyed it. But he went on and took it because he loved us. Yes. Without him, what would we do? We look to you, your Son and the Holy Spirit, Father. And we want to bless each and every one here, Father. Those who sit down on their bed, affliction. Father, raise them up. Let them know you're there. Mm -hmm. Heal their body, Father, whatever they are going through. You know who they are and where they are and what they are going through. Father, we thank you. We just give all thanks to you. Yeah. We hate what's going on into this world. Father, you already knew it. And you long suffering. Yes. You long suffering. You done you don't want you want to save that love and those who hear your word, Father. We want we want to thank you. We want to thank Brother Shaw, our Amen. brother, to bring the bread of life that we could add it to our life and share it with others and tell them how much you love them, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you so much. Thank you. We give you so much praise. You could have destroyed us, mm -hmm. but you did. Mm -hmm. You woke us up this morning. Mm -hmm. Get up out of our bed. Without any pain, I know I didn't have any. I don't know about the other, but you know all about it. But you brought them here anyway. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Jesus, yes. for suffering for us. Yes. Thank you for all you went through. Mm -hmm. You asked your father when you was on the cross, forgive him for all that they've done to you. But you are God. You know all about it. What's going 
going to happen or, and what's going to be around the corner. Please have mercy on us. Yes. We are your children, and we know without you we are nothing. Please have mercy on us. Yes. Bring tears to my eyes to think what Jesus Christ went through. He did it because he loved us. Mm -hmm. Father, take us the rest of this day. Have mercy on those who are on the way, Father, bring them here safely to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, how good you are. How wonderful you are. We appreciate you and give all the glory and honor to you, Father, yes. because we are nothing without you. And Father, this will be my prayer, and I praise your holy name in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and thank God. Amen. This song will come from page 403. No tears, no tears in heaven. All right, all right. And after this song, the next force will hear Brother C. Shaw, our man here, Grand Avenue Church of Christ. And song invitation will be taken from page 402. Go to God shall wipe all tears away. So it's just time to sing together. No tears in heaven. No tears in heaven. No sorrows given. All will be glory in that land. There be no sadness. All will
at 6 o'clock and I'd like to ask some of these husbands because sometimes I have things to do well, and uh, if some of you husbands your wife is coming to class come up and sit that hour with them so we wouldn't want anybody busting in here hurting any of our loved ones so if some of you brothers got the time share it with the sisters on Thursdays and, uh, I'll probably go and visit my sister, maybe, uh, if I can, she has just been, uh, told me last night that uh, yesterday, when it really was getting dark, that she has found out from her doctor by phone that <coughs> he found cancer in her stomach. But I just know that she's a Christian and all of us in my family live in. Christians. We believe that God can fix a lot of things yes. that we don't understand. And I, I kept looking at my daughter-in-law and I never did see her husband. And after a while somebody uh, saying, said something and I heard him say amen. Because I was going to call him in the office but I didn't get to do that. But uh, we just know God. So pray for me and, and pray for my sister. And I 
told her, and I always tell people, and they pray for our brother that did the appreciation for us. Uh, his granddaughter can't make sense now when she tries to talk. But uh, I'll let, let him, when he come by to see us, tell you all when he comes back. But God knows what's going on. So I just ask all of us to trust him and do what he wants us to do. Thank you, Brother Monroe. Amen. 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 The songs that you sang and Brother Boyd, as, as you could hear, uh, he's cracking up <laughs> right about here, though. Mm -hmm. So I ask you, and I got some real good news because my doctor told me this week, last week, this new week, and he said, Mr. Shaw, I don't want to see you until six months. Wow. He did one operation and he was thinking he'd like to do another on, on, I can't think of it now, but uh, I have a, a, another spot that's trying to act up. But I'm, I'm convinced that whatever God wants, God going to get. Right. So I just say to all of us, let's trust Him. And all of our guests want you to know that we appreciate you and very, very, very much. Isn't it wonderful to have somebody who loves you so much that regardless to how bad we act, regardless to how little some of us serve, Regardless to what you do, when you come to your senses and you say, God gave me this day, I'm going to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. And I certainly, certainly appreciate uh, all of our guests. When the Lord said, oh, oh look, look, good to see you, baby. How you doing? Just love to see you, I'm telling you. Uh, love to see all of you. But uh, she usually on, on a job, and I thank you for seeing you today. And I'm just very happy. Paul's daughter is with us today. Thank God. Go ye therefore into all of the world and preach the gospel. Isn't that nice? Amen. <coughs> Go teach these nations. <laughs> Because they need to know the word of God. Teach them. Baptize them. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things. And Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That's a God who really loves us. Amen. And we've done a lot of things in our lives in the past, but we've asked our forgiveness, and if you've asked him to forgive you, he has. You don't have to worry about it. God keeps his word, right. and he wants us to know that whatever we do, we have his hand right there guiding us and holding us to do the work. Later, he says in Mark chapter 15, 16, 16, 15, 16, when we look at that, we hear him say, go into all the world. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel wherever you go. And we need to know we need to know that wherever we go, the person that believes the word of God, the person that believes, you got to believe. Amen. You have got to believe. Because when we believe, that shows our love for the Lord. And then those that do not believe, he can't show his love until they repent be baptized because he wants us all to be saved. What a joy it was when I found the truth and I was
have shown what was wrong with my going in this world. But we have to know this. We must know it and we must understand that just knowing it is not enough. You got to share that word with the world. That's why he wanted us to go into all the world and then share the word with the world and then know this, our children should be first on our list. Amen. Because when we have children, we want them to go where we we're planning on going with the Lord. I come to ask a lot of evangelists that are not teaching what they should be teaching. Have you, have you noticed, wow. have you noticed, and, and, and a lot of us are, are, are saying, I watch so and so and so, and I watch so and so and so, and I watch so and so. If you read your Bible, women are not supposed to be up doing that. Amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Women are not to be preaching the word of God. Amen. Paul was teaching me, he says, I, I suffer that women don't teach men. That you know the word, you got to know it, you can study it. It's important that we study the Word of God so we can know. Mm -hmm. But then we must be willing to share with them the truth. I've had a lot of women walk up to me and say, you sing like a preacher. <laughs> I'm a preacher. And one time we went to a funeral. And uh, I forget who funeral it was, but uh, one of the elders of the church walked up and he says, uh, ma'am, uh, you can sit out there with them. Out there. You don't you don't belong up here. You got to have courage to tell people what God don't want. Y'all didn't hear that. Amen, brother. He says, uh, you can't sit up here with the preachers. Yeah. And I said, she said, You mean you want me to go down there? I'm a preacher. He said, no, you're not. You think you are. That's pretty strong. You're not a preacher. You're not even a deacon. You don't rate deacons' jobs. And here, there are enough men to usher. So he just gave her a quick lesson right there. And he said, there's that preacher's out there sitting out there because you're up here and you don't belong here. So I'll ask you to take your time out. Ask the young man to sing a song while you and she said, "Well, she's a preacher." He said, "She's listening in that ear like you're listening." So we're gonna let him sing, and you're gonna move on out into one of the other seats. And he waited right there, and I thought he was very kind to her. He walked down there and helped her down off the step. Thank you very much for coming down. She didn't like it, but you could tell. Me. You could tell she didn't like being told to come from the pulpit. Uh -huh. And a lot of men sit up in the church, and I'm saying this, and I'm not, uh, I'm not afraid. Men folks sit there and, and seem to enjoy more than some women. Uh -huh. But let's go do what he asked us to do. Go into all of the world and preach the gospel. Amen. But he was talking to men folk. Amen. Amen. And what we want to do is to show the truth. We don't try to embarrass people. That's right. We're not going to try to embarrass anybody in, in, in this church. And if there's somebody that does and I find out about it, I'm going to talk to those people. But we ought to invite them to come do come, we ought to invite them to listen to the word of God. And I'm hoping that, that more teaching will be done on what sisters can do and what sisters cannot do. Amen. Amen. I, I had a lady about two weeks ago tell me my husband, she said, my husband can't tell me nothing. And I don't get into arguments like that. Get into those arguments. You ask me a question, I'll give you the answer to it. But you're arguing, and, and now he sat right there beside you, and he said, I, I think I still remember what that says. She's crazy. But I didn't.
didn't, I didn't, you're right. I didn't do that. I kept my peace. And then he said, you know what? Where do you go to church? I told him. Grand Avenue in Brockett. That's where I worship. He said, I think I'm going to start coming down there because some of these other preachers, just so glad to have women in there, and they get up there and ask for money when we won't do it. Well, that's not God's will. That's why we have these things on the side. Put your money in there and go on about your business. But one thing for sure, God wants all of us to show that we appreciate him. Yeah. And we need to show that we appreciate him. When you look at Ephesians chapter 4, when we look at it, and I'm coming back to uh, Matthew, Mark, John chapter 20 and 21, but when we look at Matthew, uh, chapter, at Ephesians chapter 4, there's a word there that helps me to see why God is saying what he is saying to us. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Not a woman was listed in those words that God sent down for us to understand. The evangelist's job is to share the message of God with people. His job is to know that there are a lot of people that don't understand and it's our job to try to help them to understand what we ought to do. We ought to spread the word. But that didn't take it from women talking to people in their neighborhood and talking to people that don't know the truth. There's nothing wrong with them for sharing the truth with others if they know it. When I first met my wife, I wasn't in the Church of Christ. Amen. When I first met her, I wasn't in the Church of Christ. But then she had so much concern about what we do as ministers. She said, Charles, you got to, you got to have classes. And her whole family took out time to share with me and her brother the word of God. Oh, I was mad in the wet hand. I didn't like it because I thought that my parents would not show me the wrong way to go. What I had to learn, what I had to learn was this. God runs this world. Yeah. He supersedes this world with all authority. Everything that go on in this world, God has the right to say no, and he has the right to say yes. Yeah. So I said, I better read it. Then Leroy, uh, dad, Say, well, I tell you what, I'm willing to talk to you about the Word of God. But I want you to read and read it well because that's going to judge you in the end. That's going to judge. This Bible is going to judge us in the end. And we need to know it. We need to, I'm not saying God don't give you a test. He's already tested us. He knows when we're faithful. He knows when we're not faithful. He knows when we're studying his word. He knows when we don't study his word. It's important to do what he asked us to do because he wants you to be saved. And he, he constantly tells us what we need to do to be saved. In order to obey God, you've got to hear his word, believe it, repent of your sin, confess to Jesus. Christ is God's son and then go down in the watery grave of baptism. Wash your sins away. Have them washed away. And all the sins that you have committed in your past, God will throw it into a lake of forgetfulness. But every time you sin, you have to go back and apologize for what you've done wrong. You see, the devil is going to make sure, he's going to make sure that as many of God's folk that he can, as many as God's folk of God's folk, He's going to try his best to get you off the road. Yeah. He's going to try to keep you going the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And a lot of husbands still, I, I tell people this often, I, I used to, we used to try to talk to my brother about the word of God. And he 
said, I'll talk to you, but I don't want you taking me to the book of Revelation. That's the book of condemnation. But, you know, that's a book to tell you what he wants and what he wants to put up with it too. Well, we have to know this. And please don't feel bad that, that I'm, I, I don't, my folk raised me up and, and tried, took me to church and uh, all my brothers and sisters my mama had talked to her. A lot of times women do all the talking. Men don't too much. But uh, I was there and I, my brothers, she said, if y'all don't want to read the gospel, uh, I'm going to get a hope to some of you tonight. But I wasn't afraid of a whooping. And when it comes to the word of God, don't be frightened. Amen. Read it and get an understanding. Out of all of you get and get an understanding. When you get that understanding, then you'll thank somebody that told you the truth. Amen. Thank somebody that told you the truth. You feeling all right, Grandpa? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You, you you're kind of tilting now. <laughs> good, Don't you slide none of that seat in front of you right, right back. <laughs> I'm good, sorry, bro. but I'm I'm just I, I just saw you doing that. Bro. I'm good. Appreciate okay. That. Then said Jesus unto them. Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me. Get that now. That's a word that we all need to listen to. As my Father, he said, Jesus talking, has sent me, he says to us, even so I send you. As my Father sent me, even so I send you. That's an important statement to hear. The evangelist has a job to do, and he's not going to try to hurt your feelings. He's not going to make you feel like you can't do this and you can't do that. You can if you study. Read scripture. See what God has said, and see if he wants us to do what's right. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. He gave some. He gave some. Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. That's what he gave. He never, God, when he was creating this world, he never called the woman. Don't y'all get upset with me. To go preach the word. He never gave the woman to be a pastor. Never. And you, and you need to just, if you love people, show them the truth. Amen. Let them see the truth. Yes. And let them understand the truth. Yes. Evidently, he didn't need woman to do what man needed to do. Amen. I heard people say, I won't have a husband. But you want the benefits of a wife from a man that's not your husband. down beside you now. You want the man to rule over the woman. Mm -hmm. Woo! Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Woo! I don't care how you feel about it. Jesus said, as God sent me, so said I you. That's what he said. Some wives just say, my husband can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. well, if your husband let it go like that, I don't, I don't have nothing to say about it. Because guess what? He'll pay for it. And she'll pay for it. We must learn to respect each other. And brothers, I'm going to tell you something. When we think that we know it all, we don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Respect your husband. And if you don't respect him, you ought to respect him for respecting you. Amen. To tell you what's right. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm saying that God tells women there's a time that they have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Now, if I die, it's 
Sister Shell decides that she wants to marry again, that's her business. Amen. None of you church members can tell her she can't. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Nobody can tell my wife, you can't get married. What you feel. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what I know what God has said. And if you're not going to live right, don't get a husband. But you got to be a Christian. Amen. You got to be a Christian. And you can't go to heaven without a Christian. Being a Christian. Right. Someone said, well, why are you preaching this today? Well, I'll tell you. I was talking to a man that was supposed to have been coming out to send somebody out to fix my TV. And he said, you sound just like me. I said, I don't know how you sound. But I tell you what, if you are sound in the faith, if you are studying the word, and he said, well, I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I said, what? He said, I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I said, then you can help me right now. The folk have had my TV for two and a half months. And I couldn't find the movies that I like. I said, sometimes we have programs on TV, and I couldn't see that yet. And I said, uh, how long you been in the church? He said, I've been in the church for about 13 years. Isn't that something? And when we got to talking, you could tell he was in the church. Yeah. When you talk to somebody that's ashamed to say anything about God, and ashamed to say anything yeah. about being baptized, and ashamed to say anything about doing what's right and going to church on Lord's Day like we're supposed to, that's not a person that's really in God. Oh, man. I love coming to worship and serve. I missed some Sundays last year that Vertigo sent me on a fast trip. I found out here lately that some members of this church has vertigo. And some members of another church has vertigo. You can't stop what you get. But there's one thing you can do. You can contact the man that has a power to shut it down. And I told Bertie, I said, now, the, the, the stuff the doctor gave me haven't done nothing yet. I'm still dizzy. Still dizzy. They watch me. Derek and his mama watch me like a hog. And, and I, sometimes I get tired, but then I think about it. They love you. you know, don't, don't blow your fuses. They love you. And if a person loves you, they want to see you do what's right. And I want to see them do what's right. In Acts chapter 8, there was a man that God sent Philip talk to. He said, I want you to go down and join yourself to the chapel. Mm -hmm. That's a man that had come all the way to Jerusalem to worship. He come all the way up here to worship. And when we find him up here ready to worship, he was interested in knowing what God had to say. Mm -hmm. So Philip, Herod, to the chariot. Stop the chariot. The man, he them get up here and sit down. He said, do you understand what you're reading? And the man was honest. He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And I want you to get it now. I want you to get it because in Acts chapter 4, 11, and he gave some to be apostles. I deliberately went to 11 so I can bring you back up to verse number 1. Mm -hmm. Alright, you got it? Now look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 8 and verse number 1. He said, and Saul was breathing out threatening against the church. He, 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 in, in Acts chapter 8, Saul was breathing out threatening against the church and his death. He wanted Philip. He wanted Philip have to die for the thing that he had done wrong. Are you ready? Saul was consenting unto Philip uh, 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 death. He wanted to see him die. I hope we don't 
don't see it right here. I don't know whether Brother Boy can remember this, but I'm going to ask him. I remember him saying this one time. I don't care who you dislike. God is not, he may not let you live to see that person go through more punishment. He used to say that. Now, I hope you remember that. Because I learned, I said, now you know what? That makes sense. God's not going to help us to do wrong. Amen. He's going to help us to do what's right. Amen. And what we need to know is that when we do what's right, we have the right to tell a person what's wrong and what's right. Amen. If we do what's right, but then don't think that God's going to let you get away with doing things that you shouldn't be doing either. Amen. He's not going to do that. You may not live long enough to uh, complain or see that person suffer. I think that's the way you put it. You may, you may, he may not let us live long enough to see the person that has done you harm suffer. But God don't fight your battle like that. But he will defend us from all wrong. Then he goes on to say, at that time there was a great persecution against the church and, uh, at Jerusalem. People don't like the church. They do things against the church things against the church. But here's what I want, I want us all to know. When we are doing wrong, we better straighten ourselves up because we can look at the word and see what God has said. Stephen was, was ready to die. That's what I was trying to get to. Stephen had come to a point in his life that he wasn't that far off from being wrong. And he was, somebody said, how do you say that? Because if he had given up on Christ, he wouldn't have made it. But Stephen sat there and he did all he could to hold on to what's going on right. Therefore, in verse number four, they that were scattered abroad were everywhere preaching the word of God. If you are afraid of preaching the word of God, you are not a good servant for the Lord. Amen. You can't be afraid of, of the word of God. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached to Christ unto them. And the Bible says, the Bible says, when we look at verse 6, and the people with one accord gave heed. <coughs> the people with one accord gave heed one unto the other, knowing that we need the word of God. We need it. We need, why don't we study more together? And I'm hoping that real soon, I'm serious, I would love to see uh, brothers come out uh, on the same day that the sisters have their latest Bible class. So if they come, then the brothers is in another room. And then we have plenty of protection for our sisters when they come up to study the Word of God. And brother, they haven't killed them. They have come on out and studied and had great classes. I sit in here and let them have their class. But I'm willing for all of my sisters and all of my brothers to come back. And we're going to have to do it up. Now, the, the, the governor said, shut them all down. He thought he did something. And then someone said that he, he thinks that he is the one with the power. No, he just doesn't know God. God has the power. And a lot of us need to get ready and try to get in the church where we can help somebody else. For the unclean spirit cried unto the loud voice, Come out of many of them that they're possessed with them. And many taking this policy. And I'll tell you something else. There are some sicknesses that we don't have to go to the hospital for if we just talk to God. Yes. My wife lost a check here the other day. She said, baby, you know why I put that book you I had a receipt. I, I, I don't know what I did with it. I said, well, baby, let's just talk to God. Let's just talk to God. I was outdoors one time and working in my yard, and she came out. And I, I just stick money in my pocket. You know, I just, I'm going to get it out. But uh, I, it's no telling how much money I was stuck in my pocket, and somebody else had to go clean them those clothes that I had and picked out some money. She said, what's that? What's that? I found it down. I said, what? She said, it's 
She said, that was a $50 bill there. I have nobody been out there but me. And I said, it's, it's got to be mine. It's got to be mine. No one, she wasn't out there working with me. I was out there working. We were growing up between my fence. And I was trying to get all that out of my fence. And she said, baby, I tell you all the time, put your money in your pocket, in your wallet, so you don't lose it. Have you ever lost money like that? You have? Tell me when you couldn't hear me all. I come over and help I'm serious. I thought Charles was such in his pockets. Look at him, he is such in his pockets. But he, he wants to make sure, look, don't go in my office. I, I'll check you out. But she said, Charles, you just careless. Well, I'm not going to give you any money. I'm going to until I see you put it where it's supposed to be. We don't steal from each other. <laughs> look at him. I hope you got it all in the right I place. Got it. I got it. If you lost something, then just stay out of my office until I can make you happy. Go in there. God knows we all need to learn how to appreciate God. We need to learn that God wants us all to be honest, sincere with each other. Then I'll tell you what, whenever you get to the point that somebody need some help. Help them. Right. Help them. Know this. Prayer can change a whole lot of things we have. Amen. And that's all it is. And she came back short. She said, oh, oh baby. Baby, I found my wrist. Mm -hmm. She spent some big money too. Mm -hmm. Some stuff that we had to have done. And she showed me that. And I said, see that? Prayer changes things. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you all the same thing. Yes. If you have lost some money, don't worry about it. If it's to be yours and if God wanted somebody else to have it because they didn't have, just thank him for letting you drop it and somebody could get it if they wasn't a drunk or a dope head. You know. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to give it. I told you all when I first came to Sherman, man asked me, could you take me to the store? Well, I, I need to get to the store, man. And I, well, get in, I'll take you. And all these stores in Sherman, he wants to go to dentist. Yeah, I want to go to dentist. And what he said, that's the one I need to go to, like that. Liquor store. <laughs> he came out with some bread and some wieners and a big old six pack. I said, man, I'll not take you back when you asked me to pick you up. I said, but I'm going to take you home. But don't you ever ask me to take you to the liquor store. Amen. I don't drink. I don't buy folk liquor. I don't buy folk cigarettes. And I'm telling you something. We need to be lovers of the truth. And let God help us all where we need to do it. John chapter 5 and 39 tells us to search the scriptures. For right. and then you think you have eternal life, but they are there to testify. Search the scripture. Make sure that you are doing what God wants you to do. Isaiah 34, 16, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Don't just start at the back of the page, but start at the front and read down to what that verse is saying. Read. Learn. Understand it. I think about how often I didn't want to read the truth. And whenever she would leave and go to work, I would run out to my car and I had a Oldsmobile and I would go out there and unlock the trunk and get the fall off my Bible and take that croker sack. Take it out of that croker sack and she's gone now to work and I go in there and I'd study hard that day. Study hard. And I studied my way in from what they had been teaching me. And I found the truth. Amen. And I'm so glad that I found <coughs> the truth. And then she said, Charles, do you need some help? 
then I, I needed help because she had told me what was right and I needed to know what was right. Help people to come to know to the knowledge of God. Amen. And when you come to the knowledge of God, get in it and stay in it and study the word of God. I was listening to, I think it was Charles talking, Derek didn't ever get up doing the appreciation, but they used to pray like preachers at home. And they pick up, pick up chairs and put them on something and they, they stand there and study the word. And he said, I'm glad that my parents taught us like they taught us. And they had, they had to go study the Bible. Now we went and got them some good Bibles to study. And I see that it had done good. And I'm telling you something, it's good to have kids that will follow after their parents who know what's right. And they do it like that. They sing. They have to have a book and sing. Learn to sing. Both of them can sing good. Amen. But the whole point is, I wanted them to see Jesus and not mom and I. But they had a good example. A lot of you have done a good job with your children. Show them good examples. Yes. Know this. Know this. It will not hurt. When Paul was talking, I am indebted. I like that. I'm indebted not to the Lord. I'm indebted to my children. I'm indebted to people that don't know Christ. Because I want them to come to know Christ. And I don't want to see anybody lost at the judgment. I'm telling you something. I, I, I know it's going to be some, but he said he was indebted to both the Greek and the barbarians. Paul said that's not. But we, we need to help each other. We need to start knocking some doors. Amen. We need to go out and knock these doors. We need to go out and teach the word. I, I remember a lot of time we had classes at the jail. And a lot of young men will come down because they want to hear the truth. Amen. And I'm telling you this because if we don't get busy and if we don't make up our mind, it's nothing. Now, we're trying to get these machines that will have it in here so that you can feel comfortable Amen. in worship service. Yes. Put them up there. And they work. And a young man is a member of the church. He sells those things. And he, he, he said, look, I'm going to save you uh, almost a thousand dollars if you all need them. But I'm saying, he said, if you can't, if you can't take care of them, don't get them. But it will make your heart feel relaxed when you know those machines and it, and virus is still out there. People are dying now like they was the first year we heard about it. Yes. But there are some things that we need that we can't do. But we know God know how to handle them. Yeah. God know how. I went to the church the other day, and the bu a puzzle went off. And I, I was coming back from up, up in Oklahoma, and I tell you, I tell you, I, it, it scared me when it went off. And I said, "What? Well, why is that light blinking like that? It's time to clean it. The machine tells you, clean it. That's it." And he said. For the churches of Christ, for the churches of Christ, and I said it to anybody, for the churches of Christ, I have a deal for them. I cut out a thousand dollars. Man, that's something. Amen. That's something. He's working for a funeral. And he does all he can. A lot of congregation. And him and his wife decided for Small yeah. congregations that have a lot of people that come visit. And they don't know where they're coming from. And he gave several out to churches that can't afford it because they don't make that much. But one thing he does, he look out for them, the churches of Christ because that's what he is. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may he help you to see that we are God's children. Yes. We, I don't know, I don't know whether any of you all did what you could for Sister Rogers' grandson. And I'm telling you, it's a great deal <coughs> to have people that can do things to help them. 
some of us don't want to help them. Help whom you can, when you can. But do this, do this. Don't force them to have to beg you to do anything. That's right. When Philip went down to teach that Ethiopian unit, he asked the question. He asked the question. So this is what I want you to think about. I want you to know that what you're reading, you need to understand. He did. He taught him. And he's riding on with that chariot. After a while, after a while, he said, that walk won't hinder me to be baptized. If you know and heard, you heard the truth, obey it. Obey it. Because that's what God wants us to do. Take time out to meet and greet our guests. Take time out to do that. That's important because this may be the last time and maybe the only time they get to hear the truth, but tell them the truth. Show them you love them. And don't act like they're not there, but do what you can to encourage them to take on the word of God. I told you it wasn't going to be long, and it's going to be shorter because I'm going to get down. I got a burning, and I'm going to sit down before I burn out. But sometimes you have to listen to your body. Yes. If your body tell you something, do what it says. Mm -hmm. Don't don't lie. Don't lie. If you're hurting, you're hurting. If you're here and you need to come to God, we encourage you. You need to, you need we encourage you to listen. You've heard the word. Believe it. Repent of doing wrong. Confess that Jesus Christ is God's Son. And be willing to go down in the water and pray for baptism. If you need to do that, we invite you to come while we sing this song that He invited us to sing with Him.
scripture I've seen, I've repented those sins. And keep me in your prayers. Uh, I have ran out of my blood pressure medicine and I'm just not getting it back. Just keep me in your prayers and Amen. I can get back on track. Okay. Okay. Brother, sister, I want to ask y'all to pray for my family. Um, my sister Jackie, she's in the I'd like to ask you, I'll keep my family in your prayer, and I ask special prayer for my sister in Dallas. She's going through some things. Sometimes we call ourselves helping, and we be hurting our own self, trying to help others. So well, just keep her in your prayer. <clears throat> and the kids, she raised the kids. She raised some kids, and it seems like she's going through a lot with them. And one just come home from the pen and tend to go right back, and she took him into her home, you know. So just keep her in the prayer and keep him in your prayer. And just keep my family. Go youngsters, just to come back to the Lord before it's too late. Amen. 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 Yes. Uh, I'm just standing asking for special prayer. There are some things that are going on in my family that certainly need prayer. So I'm asking the church to pray for my family. Uh, that God will uh, bring us through this. <coughs> stronger than uh, we were before. So keep us in prayer for that. Uh, also, uh, keep my little granddaughter Leanna in your prayers. She's pregnant uh, again, and uh, she is having some complications. So keep her in your prayers that uh, things will go stronger and better for her during this time, uh, during this pregnancy. And, uh, keep her in your prayers as well. Thank you so much. Amen. Sister, I've seen how the pain of my sins and I ask for the prayers the righteousness that I make it stronger. As you continue to pray for me, I am dealing with some things uh, personally. Um, I just ask you to continue to pray for me and that uh, God give me peace. Amen. 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 I can ask me, uh, the church to pray for me for my job. I've been on in about 12 years and when new management comes, they have new stipulations and have their own rules and everything. So they made a drastic change have some decisions to make, so please keep me in prayer. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Good and gracious and kind and almighty Father in heaven. Father, once again, we come to you. Giving thanks to you, Father, for blessing us to see this day. For blessing us, Father, as we drove down the highway to get here safe. Father God, we thank you for our ministry, Father. Amen. We thank you for Brother Shaw delivering such a beautiful message this morning, Father, that I pray that we all take heed to it and don't just leave it here at the church, at the building where we are sitting. Father God, I pray for the ones that have stood up and said that they've sinned. I pray, Father, that you bless them. Lead them, guide them, and direct them, Father, mm -hmm. as they make changes in their lives and move on, Father. I pray for the ones, Father, that have stood up and said that they have family members that are ill mm -hmm. and that they're ill, that or they don't have their medicine, Father. Mm -hmm. And I pray, Father, that you will bless them, restore the ones that are sick, help them lead them. And guide them, Father, as they move on. Father, we pray for all the little children, Father, mm -hmm. both large and small. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you will restore them, Father. Restore them of their health and bless them, Father, where they will feel better tomorrow than they did today. Father God, I pray for this congregation here. I pray, Father, for the ones that wanted to be here today, Father, but who are unable. I pray for the ones, Father, that are in the nursing home. 
are the ones, Father, that have to be at home and watch us on YouTube. I pray, Father, that you just lead them, guide them, help them. Help the ones that are sick, Father, that can't get out of their beds, that are bedridden. Or the ones, Father, that just have to stay away from everyone else because of their illness. Father God, as we move on forward, Father, I pray that we grow as a congregation. That we grow, Father, both physically and spiritually. That we look at each other, Father, with support and encouragement. Father God, these prayers I say to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It's at this time that we come together to prepare to partake of the Lord's book and body and shed blood. We will be reading from the 26th chapter of the book of Matthew, beginning with the 26th verse. And it reads as follows. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you that I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, it's at this time that we come to commune with your Son. We will partake of the broken body and the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you would bless this communion. We ask that you would bless the hands and Partake in it that they may do so with a clear heart and a pure mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for us to focus on our offering, taken from the 16th chapter of the 1st Corinthian letter. 1st Corinthians 16, beginning in verse number 1, it says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Father God in heaven, it's at this time that we come humbly bowed and wonderfully thankful for all that you have abundantly blessed us to receive. We ask God that as we place back and give back toward the, the, the sainthood of this congregation of the Church of Christ, we ask God that we do it with a, a cheerful heart, that we do it knowing God that this uh, shall be spread unto those that stand in need of the growth of thy kingdom be able to establish an opportunity to help someone in their need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Upon that, please remember um, to make it a sense of urgency before you leave, before we actually, sometimes we get caught up in conversations and we forget uh, 
that those receptacles are on the wall. But we ask that you would make haste if you have to send your child up to put it in there. Because these men that are working in the office, they want to go ahead and uh, get away from here too and say, have to count that and do what they need to do financially from the back. So as soon as we dismiss, as we be asking each in each side to dismiss, that's why we do it, uh, that you would make way to those receptacles on the wall, put your offering in it uh, just before you exit the doors in the same uh, from the center of the auditorium. Thank you, Brother Shaw, for the message that God placed upon your heart. We'll continue to pray for you and definitely pray for your sister and for your entire family, for sure, for, for Dahl and the recent information regarding this cancerous thing. But you said it, and we don't just want to say it. We have to believe that God is able to do things. The doctor can say one thing, but God has another plan. And so don't ever doubt. And don't let the word, last word be man's word. Let the last word be God's word. So if you trust in God and believe with all your heart, God will move that mountain. He'll move that mountain. Brother Shaw made mention in regards to his example, and he did see me do it. Um, when I got to service, my brother asked me for change. He asked me to the house and change for something. And I reached into my pocket where I keep my money. Pulled out my money, I didn't have the change. He needed and I transferred it to the pocket up here. Don't normally do that. So when he said it, it made me think. So I checked my pocket, I didn't feel my money my pocket, so I got kind of worried just a little bit. <laughs> but I got ready to eat. <laughs> when I, I reached the there it is. So, yeah, I was thinking about that, brother. And uh, indeed, it did alert me to that, to that situation. But we say to you all, just before we dismiss, we thank you very much for listening in. I hope, trust, and pray that uh, the Wednesday night Bible class lessons that you're listening to those. I know it can be kind of tedious, and you hear me say it sometimes before I even start teaching. That it's hard to just sit there and watch somebody read something to you. Uh, but I look forward to the time when we come back into the assembly because I like the feedback. No, I love the feedback. I love when we can interact with one another and be able to hear the comments back and forth to show. That shows growth. And that's what that lesson, these lessons are about, brothers and sisters. These lessons are dedicated and designed, are designated and designed for us to get confident and growing. Brother Shaw mentioned it in this lesson. Brothers and sisters, if we're not trying to teach somebody, we're going to have a hard time getting into heaven. Because we can't just have God's word in our heart and just wear it ourselves. Our job is the same as Christ. We call ourselves Christians, being Christ-like. Christ came on this earth for one reason. To seek, and that's what we need to be doing, evangelizing, and to save, which is what we need to be trying to do. We can't save anybody. But we should put them in a position through the word to be saved. Those that are lost. But we only do that through teaching God's word. And we only do that through the encouragement. And like Brother Shaw said, the courage and the boldness and the confidence. And the only way you get that is to study. Just like Brother Shaw, I came from a denominational background. I went off and studied for myself. I wasn't always with Sister Patterson or Sister Boyd, my wife now, to go off and, and, and look over those. I had to do it on my own. And when I found it for myself, Found it for myself. Then I obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to me. I made the decision to obey the gospel of Christ. And if nobody can change my mind, if we were that sure and that confident about being members of the church, we ought to want someone else to know. But the only way they're going to know, a lot of people, is that we share them. And you're not going to share it if you're not confident that you got it. So... You may say, I'm going to church, I'm pretty confident, I know I got it, I know I'm, I'm in the right place. Well, then help someone else to know that, that you're in the right place by teaching them where the right place is. And that's all that lesson is designed to do. Shortly, I will be stepping aside, and I'm going to meet Brother Shaw, and our, 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 I was even going to mention to Brother Shaw, some of these fine gospel preachers that preach up here. Uh, me and Brother Shaw talked one time before, if they can preach, they ought to be able to teach. And I know that they can. And yield that time a quarter uh, three months to them, and let them bring about a lesson. Brother Shaw said he wanted to hear more about why women can't preach in the church. That's opportunity given. So shortly I'll be uh, moving to the side, but I'm going to come back in my next quarter and finish up what I started. And you know what I'm going to hope and pray? Is that everything that we've been talking about in that Wednesday night is giving you time to go back and study, study, get confident, find you someone 
that you can attach yourself to to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to be about. And if we're not doing that, we're going to be selfish and try to hold it on to ourselves. And we're going to have a hard time, like Brother Charles mentioned, getting into heaven, having the truth, but not being willing to share it with someone else. Amen. The Bible, there's a song, and I wish I knew how to sing it, and I'm going to learn it one day. I said I would have learned it yet. But uh, something about you, you, never mentioned, you never mentioned him to me. You never mentioned him to me. All these times we've been together, been around, but you never mentioned him. So we need to be mentioning Christ to someone. Thank you again, visitors, for being here. Again, we say, like we said at the beginning, we said at the end, you are very much our, our honor guest. We appreciate you. We love you. And we want you to come back and be with us again and feel safe in coming to this place. We thank you, Grand Avenue family, for working with and being a part of everything that we do here at Grand Avenue. We want to make sure that we express to our visitors what we say. That's important. And make sure that you contact, get in, in contact with a visitor before they leave. Let them know how much we appreciate them being there. As you do that on your way to putting your money in those receptacles, we want to make sure that you get that, get that done. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good to us. Indeed, He is. Bow with me as we go to the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for once again allowing us to be part of this wonderful service. Thank you for keeping us attentive. Thank you for helping us to recognize our position and our place. Thank you for giving us all in this room that are members of the body of Christ our own special talent. And we ask God to help us all recognize what that talent is. And then when, once we recognize what that talent is, that we will make haste, that we will see the sense of urgency to put that talent to its best use. Nobody knows but you, God, what our last day on this earth is going to be. Help us to make the best of each and every day. Help us to wake up each morning recognizing you and go to bed at night recognizing you. And all that goes in between that morning and that night, let you be pleased in our efforts. And if you're not, let us be repentant enough to ask forgiveness and get back on the road. We ask you, God, to continue to bless again your man's servant, Brother Sean, and be with his heart at this time. We know it's, it's heavy, just in the knowledge of knowing his sister's condition. But thank you, God, that you've made him a man that is acquainted with many a grief, because he's seen loved ones go and come. Not particularly so much as even in his family, but in the families of this congregation where he ministers. Being there by their side, both day and night, early hours of the morning being called and on funeral situations and on planning so he's acquainted with it. We know he knows how to handle it, but yet it's still we can call on you in his behalf and ask you to give him the strength to endure. Be with his wife, Sister Shaw, who's always there by his side. Be there with her, Heavenly Father, as she helps him stay uh, focused, helps him, and when he may lean to one side to straighten him up and prop him up that he may continue to uh, stand straight and, and be ever forceful in the gospel truth, Heavenly Father, that they both may continue to be the uh, husband and wife and Christian example uh, to this congregation that they've always been in 50 plus years. We ask you, God, that you continue to watch over us as a congregation, continue to help us be all that we can be that we sit on this corner, and that we soon may be able to come back together in the form that we may be able to come to classes that we may be able, not only on a Thursday, but on a Wednesday night. Not only on a Wednesday night, our Bible class in this room, but in our classrooms opened up. That we may be able to be back to that normal portion yes. Yes. of worshiping you and serving you in spirit and in truth. God, keep and direct us, and again, be with our visitors. We love them. Watch over them. See us all safe and sound back to our homes and aboard until the next appointed time that we shall meet. And it's in your Son, our Savior's. Wonderful and blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask those that are on the end to please be standing.
only on the inside, on the outside. Please be standing if you will go ahead and pass uh, dismiss. Please don't forget to drop your offering into the into the uh, receptacle. We're asking on we're asking on we're asking on the ends only, not the center. Ends only. Y'all make me start calling names. I'm not, if I can't say it like that, they listen to it. They can listen to it. Come back, boy, because he already has it. I know he's already had it. Okay. All right, those that are in the center, you notice those are. We just don't want everyone to congregate together, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha!